Welcome back, Camely. I'm Carly Selting. I'm Cambry McNeil. And our guest is our every reoccurring, every day, no, every, every video week. reoccurring, Carter Miller. I'm so excited to be back. Missed you guys. So today we're talking about weird dreams or scary reoccurring dreams that we have had. Carter obviously has one to start off the bat. Obviously. Okay, so when I was like 10 years old, we were staying at my Grandma Julie's house. Um, I don't really remember what for. I think it was like this time of year, like hunting season, because like usually during open air pheasant like season, whatever, we all like go over there, like my aunts <coughs> or my uncles and my aunts and cousins, whatever, we all end up at my grandma's house hanging out. Okay, so my grandpa built all of us grandchildren bunk beds in their basement so that we can all stay there because they only have three bedrooms in their house so he built us all bunk beds because there's like 10 of us so we all have bunk beds in the basement and i was sleeping down there in my bunk bed okay and i was having this crazy weird dream that um these little people um they were like aliens though and they were all red and they attacked like every family and unalived everybody except for the middle children which would be like me so i had to watch like these like little aliens like murder my entire family and then they they like chased me around and i was like running through like this town i don't even know what it was but there's like a strip mall i was running by and they chased me and then like i don't know it was just really scary for me and i'm still haunted by it i don't really know why but yeah and then i woke up like sweating a cold sweat and crying and i ran upstairs to my dad because i was so scared about it and i've had that same dream like four different times throughout the years which is why I remember it because it's always the same exact thing and it's like because of how my family is um at my mom's me and Sawyer would be middle children and at my dad's me and Jackson would be middle children but for some reason I was the only one that they like tortured about it like you know like they murdered both of those two and I was the only when they didn't like murder right away they just chased me around and murdered my entire family so that's my scary dream my scary reoccurring dream is it's not doesn't have much of a backstory but so i don't know i think it's like a big field right plant an rv in the middle of it me and my family are camping in this said RV. And I go to sleep. And I wake up to a bunch of zombies raiding my entire RV, whatever. My family's dead. There's zombies. Sounds like the walking dead. Yeah, and it's like reoccurring like every single, not every single night. But, and then I escape out the back window every single time. And I run and I run and I run and I run. And then the way that I wake up is a different way that I die every single time. Like, I've been caught and grabbed by the leg by a zombie, or else I've had people trying to shoot at the zombies and then actually shoot me, thinking that I'm a zombie. I've had me falling into a fire pit and then, like, waking up with, like, that, (gasps) you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's different ending, but the same dream every single time. Mm Mm-hmm. dream that I remember is like I was little or like elementary school um and this is when like Riverdale was like popular and everybody watched it and like it was when season two came out um and I watched it with my brother Cully and I was like obsessed with that show but 
anyway, it was like with the black hood and stuff, and like I had a dream that Kali was the black hood and like was about to like cut off my mom's ear in our shop and then like I saved her and we rode off on a four-wheeler and that's like the only we're always the powerful people in that's, our dreams yeah that's the only <laughs> scary dream I remember like mm-hmm. good enough have you guys ever had like the dream feeling that like a lot of people talk about like where you feel like you're falling and you dream and you like wake mm-hmm. up like with that like mm-hmm. drop feeling in your stomach I've that only happens ever had to me a lot i've only ever had it time. happen once to me and i was like a i was like drifting asleep in the car i think maybe and like i literally woke up and i was like i feel like a lot of times it happens when you're about to fall into like your deep, deep sleep, sleep but you're not quite there that happens to me all the time all the time yeah and then your heart's like beating so mm-hmm. fast you can't even go back to sleep you're just you're so scared because it mm-hmm. felt so real yeah the only dreams that i have that i remember are the ones that feel so oh, realistic real. and real. yeah like yeah. the other night i had one or the other day because i took a nap yeah but i know i'm not gonna share oh. that <laughs> that's okay no Oh, yeah. I feel like the dreams that like stick out to me the most are the ones that are like that are most vivid to me are the ones where like I'm getting like hurt, like somebody does something to me that hurts yep. so bad because then like I'll wake up in just like a horrible mood or like um, I'll wake up like crying or like in a cold sweat. Like I do that a lot. Like probably like <laughs> they can probably see the paper girl see me writing from here oh Oh. maybe i don't know (laughs) but yeah i feel like those are the dreams that like i remember the most because like they feel like no matter how dramatic it is and like how unrealistic it actually is like in my dream like it's like feels like real life and like Mm -hmm. i don't know i have a juicy dream to tell um so I had a dream once upon a time that this girl from a different town who I have happened to be friends with and I, there's a, the, okay, friend and a dude that I think is cute, okay. There's a dream that me and said dude are dating and said best friend are coming to my spot at Cottonwood Lake and they are driving separately okay him and his Ford her and her her Ford too okay and I had to take my golf cart down to the dock and leave it there and walk back why was I leaving the golf cart at the dock no idea probably for Cole and his little rowboat but (laughs) but then I come and I'm walking back and I obviously see his pickup in her car so I'm like okay they're here yay let's go into the camper and I can't find them they're not in the living room they're not anywhere in the bathroom whatever and I was like why would they be in my bunk bed area like are they setting something up for me (laughs) and I walk back there and they are being very intimate and I run out of the room I block both of them on snapchat that's the first thing I did was I <laughs> blocked them both on snapchat and then yeah and I chewed said girl out and I think I forgave said boy in dream because he's so beautiful but <laughs> then I woke up and I was mad obviously because it felt so real and then I was told news by said girl that didn't make me feel good about the dream. Yeah. You were mad at both of them. For a really life. long time. <laughs> but that's what happens. Like, if I have a dream that somebody hurt me, I hold yeah. grudges yeah. because of my dreams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's just an internal conflict. <laughs> I did the exact same thing, though. It feels so real. Yeah, it like, actually hurt my feelings, so my real-life feelings are hurt. Like, exactly, because in your dream, you're consciously, kind of subconsciously, going through these scenarios. field of events, and your emotions are tied in. Yeah. 
It's my real life feelings that are getting hurt, so why shouldn't I be real life mad too? Exactly. But it's like what we're scared of and what yeah. we those insecurities in your head that are like just like But why would I be that. insecure over that? That's a very fair question. I don't think you're insecure over that. I think you're insecure about that and that person just happened to be the person. Be the person. person. Because it hurt a lot if it actually were in real life that person. Yeah. So I feel like that's why. Probably. You know? But I feel like I kind of put myself in the situations a lot of times because it's like, it's always like, if I have a dream of like my boyfriend cheating on me, it's always like my boyfriend and then somebody I'm either really close with or absolutely hate. It's never some random person I don't know. Like, it's either like a really good friend or like someone I would literally, one of, their exes one of his that exes. You like, that's like. always what it is. It's never, it's never somebody I've never met before. It's it's always somebody I know and don't like or I'm really close with because then I'm hurt that they that he was talking to like somebody I don't like, but then also hurt when I like lose a friend in it too and like it's double the hurt then you know. Mm -hmm. But then you wake up and you're like, wait, was it real or am I just like? No, I straight up woken up and been so pissed, or angry because I thought it was real and like because like that was my friend, sorry, like I've woken up or. In my dream, I like went to bed after it all, and then I wake up and I'm like, gosh, I can't believe that happened yesterday. Even though it was in my dream, but because of the way my dream ended, it made it feel like it was actually happening the day before. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So then I'm like, I'm, I'll be so mad, and then I'll like go on Snapchat or whatever, and then I'll be like, wait a second. This is that, That's never happened before, like that. Have you guys ever heard the theory of, like, the reason why you wake up when you're dying is because if you die in your dream, you actually die? No, I've heard that you wake up when you're about to die because your brain doesn't know what happens after you die. That's what I've heard. Mm. Like, your brain, like, doesn't know what happens, so, like, it can't show you, like... What happens? I've what heard happens? that, yeah, if you, like, die in your dream, you die in, in real life. <gasps> Oh my gosh, and then there's this other dream. <laughs> oh my gosh, it still like gives me that <gasps> feeling. So, it still uh, traumatized me, and it was literally only my fault doing so, okay? So I was swimming in a pool. What pool? I have no idea. And who was driving a razor? A little, like, you know, razors. Side by side, whatever you want to call them. And so said person said that thought whoever was driving i can't remember thought that they could drive one wheel on the water and one wheel on like the cement before you go into the pool mm -hmm. and so i was like obviously this isn't gonna work you're not jesus christ you can't walk on water but i was sw i was swimming underneath the razor because i was like oh if they go in i'll hold them up <laughs> well, they flipped over, trapped me underwater, and I, like, drowned. drowned in my dream. And I woke up because in my dream I was holding my breath. And then I woke up, like, out of breath. Dang near dead <laughs> because I was not actually breathing. But yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's actually kind of, yeah. I don't like that. Me either. Cam? Yeah? Anything else you'd like to add? No. No. I can't think of any other dreams. I know. I feel like the more I try to other think about like, like a big one that's happened. Things that, other than the ones I don't want to say. Yeah. There's some personal dreams yeah. that I don't really. That personally actually did happen that are just like reoccurring mm -hmm. flashbacks. Um. Why do you do that? What? Was he wrong? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so that was a good solid 15 minutes of dreams. Yep. yep. Thank you so much for watching. Join us back next Thursday, and hopefully we will have a way more interesting topic planned out. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <sighs> that just made me more tired, I feel. Talking I'm about dreams? I'm so tired. Can I put the paper back for you, Pat? Oh, I hear.
Okay, good. Okay, stop. Push the yellow red button.